I really believe that the music of jazz is in our blood, it's in our bones. When you listen to the music and the melodies and the rhythm that they were speaking about, you can feel your emotional spirit get involved in it. You know, I never really listened to jazz until now. And now I think I can find myself picking up a couple of jazz CDs or tapes and listening to them and check them out because um, that was excellent. And I'm here and there's better than that. So I think that this opened my eyes up to new aspects as far as all different kind of music. Even though we play the jazz and the bebop, we can do all that hip hop stuff y'all talking about because we did it first. I wish they had kind of had this when I was a kid, uh, coming up in school, to have um, something like this with all these great musicians playing with, with these guys. It was wonderful, wonderful. Thing. There's nowhere that you can go on this planet and not hear the influence of American jazz everywhere in the world. That's the other reason why we have to support it, because we're the only ones that look like we don't like it. <laughs> together young people in a combined academic and concert setting to perpetuate music. That's our purpose, to perpetuate music, to expose young people to master musicians, to have them interact with master musicians and learn from those situations. The Jazz Leadership Program allows for us to be able to reach out to you as an audience an appreciative audience, and clue you in even more, tune you up even more to what the music is really about, especially this music called jazz. As the only indigenous American art form, it is very important that we continue to perpetuate its understanding, and thereby perpetuating its continued life. We conceptualized this program in 1992, uh, uh, myself, James Berg, Danielle and Joseph, who is the coordinator of the, of the mentorship program, and the California Afro-American Muse Museum. We wanted to perpetuate jazz. The Cultural Affairs Department heard about me as I was uh, working with a, a jazz clinic that was at the Afro-American, California Afro-American Museum uh, of the school year through the Dolo Coker Scholarship Foundation. And we had about uh, 10 um, professional jazz musicians, some that I knew personally, that were contributing in this clinic. And uh, Stella Holman, the program director of the museum, felt that this was such an outstanding program that she thought that pro probably Rosie Lee Hooks would uh, like to have this type of thing coordinated with the Afro-American Museum and uh, the Cultural Affairs uh, to, get, to get the information out to more students throughout our city. Many years after the migration of Afro-Americans to other parts of the world, they brought with them what later would impact what would be known as American music. American music now encompasses 
jazz, rhythm and blues, blues, rock and roll, Latin music, salsa. All these musics were impacted by the migration of African slaves from the continent of Africa to all parts of the world. In any music that emanates from America, one of the essential elements that will give it its characteristics of that music is rhythm. In Africa, rhythm was a natural occurrence from day to day. Africans would just get together as we get together and talk to our homeboys and homegirls, communicate. In Africa, these people would communicate through rhythm. So in Africa, the chief would call the tribes people together. starting to play music for themselves. And that music was the most important music of all American music. And that music is called the blues. tell a story. One of the most sang blues is sang 365 days a year and it's a blues song. It's called Happy Birthday. So don't think that the blues is always about my baby done left me and I ain't got no clothes and I ain't got no shoes. <laughs>
back, I worked with a very famous and beautiful man named Willie Bobo. I learned a lot of things from Willie, but one very important thing. I was very young at the time. And he told and showed and explained that blues comes in all colors because everybody's touched by the pain. So I felt good 20 some years later writing this little song about my blues, my pain. I was born in East L.A. On the corner of Bonnie Beach and Hubbard Streets. I was born in East L.A. Down on those corners of Bonnie Beach and Hubbard Streets. Right across the street from Calvary Cemetery. I only tell you about my East L.A. Cause my East L.A. is like no other. I went down to Rosarita with my pretty senorita. We drank too much tequila. Crashed into the policia. Get me back to my... East L.A. Down on my corner of Bonnie Beach and Hubbard Street. That's right down the street from Whittier Boulevard. You know, where everybody goes. I only tell you about my East L.A. Cause that's where this Latino learned how to play. Everything was fast, and if you think of hip hop, when rappers are rapping, they're rapping fast. Come and do something. What's up? That's just like that's just like bebop when the likes of Ella Fitzgerald and Sarah Vaughan would do what was called scatting. All of that was influenced by the most influential era of jazz called bebop. Before bebop, jazz music that America danced to. It was during the bebop era that musicians made a departure from, play, from playing music for other people and started to play music for themselves. point on, jazz incorporated everything we've talked about so far. It incorporated the rhythms and another element that started with the guys playing on the porch, which is also essential in jazz, and it's called improvising. Improvising is to make something up on the spot. but also a challenge and an honor to be able to play jazz. Yes, we can play hip-hop. Yes, we can play rap. We can play funk. We can play Latin. It is a privilege and an honor to be able to get up and play what you want when you want. We're going to a song now that encompasses all of those elements that we've talked about. It will get funky. It will get beboppy. Just don't get too crazy up in here. Let us get crazy. Y'all watch. <laughs>
more because even our, our, our young people in the audience can relate to this because the music that they're currently listening to is almost entirely rhythmically based. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, let me ask Terry if she will give us a, an example of a, uh, a jazz swing beat. do that, you can see all the different instruments that she's using on her drum kit to be able to give us that. Let's have her do a Latin beat now. Okay. Now, let's try a reggae beat. So you can see that the time between the notes, the syncopation, that's what influences the style of the music. Same drummer, same drum kit. But what influences the style of the music is the distance between the notes. Now here's something that you probably didn't know, and that is how closely related to jazz hip hop is. I'll show you what I mean. The hip hop movement uses two primary beats, like the beat of the shuffle, the jazz shuffle, or the boogaloo beat, uh, you know, kind of superimposed on the funk. I'll show you what I mean. Okay. Here we go. All right. Okay, you don't believe me? Okay, check it out. Play a shuffle. Play a shuffle. Okay. Now play a funk beat. Now put them together, you got him hop. How many of you consider singers musicians? Yes. Hey, this is a smart crowd. Well, all right. Now, how many of you think that singers don't have to study? They just kind of ju jump up and just hit it. <laughs> All right, this audience is on it. I'd like to introduce to you a young lady that I met as when I came to one of these jazz mentorship programs. And we had an opportunity for people to come and sit in, and she came and sat in, and she blew me away. Pack up all your kids and go here my go singing go. Bye bye, blackbird. When somebody waits for me, sure this me, and so is he. Bye bye, blackbird. I know one here can love and understand me. Oh, what all the stories they all hand me. I think my bed, light the light. I'll be home late tonight. Blackbird, bye. I think I'll fall my hands and won't be my ghost singing low. Bye, bye, Blackbird. sort of a correlation between what we're trying to do. But as I explained to you earlier, just like the saxophones have the breakdown of soprano and alto and tenor and baritone and bass, so do voices and the sound of voices. So we're going to have the male perspective now. I'm going to introduce Roy Galloway. And Roy's going to come on up.
through a, a very serious studio system that did not hire uh, minorities, particularly African Americans, to play in the studios in this town. But he was one of the first to break through. I am there because he was there. Buddy Collette is one of the mentors that performed today. Well, I used to study with Buddy, and uh, I often play with Buddy in professional situations, and it is so gratifying to uh, sit next to somebody like Buddy and to be able to play at the level that I play at and not be intimidated. I mean, I really love it. You know, a lot of times when people are taking the music and trying to control it and call it something else, but jazz is creative music, so you have to keep growing it. So keep listening, and next time you do it, I'll be here. I encourage them to listen to recordings and to do all that, all the listening they can, because as Ndugo had said, you've got to know your roots or it doesn't mean a thing. For those of you that aspire to be professional musicians, there are no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts. It's no different from being a doctor, a lawyer, a neurosurgeon, or a basketball player. It takes a lot of hard work and sacrifice. So bearing that in mind, if you do the work, you'll get the rewards. If you do the work, you'll get the rewards. Thank you. 